Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We are going to uh, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost for bringing us here today. We know that this is unprecedented, that this is uh, not usual. Usually we are in the masjid. Usually uh, we are uh, in each other's company physically. But today we are in each other's company uh, spiritually. Uh, I am your brother, Adeyinka Mendes. I serve as the Imam and resident scholar at the Muslim Center of Greater Princeton. And with me uh, is my brother, Ustad Yusuf Hussein, uh, who uh, teaches Arabic, uh, classical Arabic grammar to help people understand the Quran. He also teaches Hanafi fiqh uh, and uh, Aqidah and theology through the Garden of Knowledge Academy. If you would like to learn how to understand the Quran, if you would like to learn the essentials that every Muslim should know from faith, uh, please look at our website and go to Garden of Knowledge Academy. As I said earlier, we are here tonight because this is our regular uh, family night halaqa. And inshallah ta'ala, even though we cannot be in the masjid together in order to prevent the spread of the novel coronavirus, we decided that it's in, it's in our interest, our, our best interest, and it should be a service to the community to continue uh, these classes, to continue uh, these sessions. And inshallah, as we did before the pandemic, we will have sometimes, I will be the person, teaching, maybe most of the time actually, I'll be the person teaching on Fridays. And other times we'll have guest uh, speakers, guest scholars who will teach. And inshallah, we will notify you uh, through our newsletter, as well as on Facebook and other uh, platforms as to who to expect and what the topic will be. Today, brothers and sisters, I'm going to uh, review the letter that was sent out uh, to those of you who are a part of our community on our newsletter. I encourage you, if you're not receiving our newsletter, to go to our website, the themuslimcenter.org, T-H-E-M-U-S-L-I-M, C-E-N-T-E-R dot O-R-G and sign up for our newsletter. It was also published on our uh, MCGP uh, Facebook page. And I'm going to go through the letter, inshallah ta'ala. I'm going to bring it up on my... phone, inshallah. And, and I want to give all of you an opportunity uh, to ask any questions ask any questions uh, that you may have uh, regarding uh, the, the newsletter. We really, really, really want to hear from you. And, and, and so this is an opportunity, inshallah, for you to be heard. And uh, inshallah, myself and Ustad Yusuf will manage uh, the chat. You're welcome, uh, after I, I go over the letter, you're welcome to ask your questions all I demand is that you make sure all background noise is uh, muted if you're going to ask the questions. Uh, you shouldn't have anything in the background. And, uh, or you're welcome to type your questions in the chat, and I'll do my best to answer them uh, to the best of my ability, inshallah ta'ala, Allah ta'ala willing. I'll read uh, the letter. I won't read it verbatim, uh, but I'll just go by the meaning, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum, dear brothers and sisters. May Allah grant you and your loved one's health, well-being, calm, and ever-increasing faith in this time of global trial with the coronavirus pandemic. Brothers and sisters, we need uh, all of these. We need health, of course, inwardly and outwardly. And health is not just physical. Health is mental, health is emotional, and health is spiritual. And we ask that Allah give us all of these different uh, dimensions of health. 
We ask for al-afiyah, as the Prophet sallallahu uh, answered his uncle al-Abbas, radiyallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, al-Abbas asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa what he should ask Allah for. And he said, ask Allah for al-afiyah. Al-afiyah is complete and total holistic well-being of the body, of the mind, of the soul, spiritual and material. And we ask for increasing faith. Without faith, I don't know how I would, have, I would be able to deal with what we're going through right now. Without Iman, without faith, I don't know I would be able to face what we're facing. You know, how we should feel pity, we should feel uh, sympathy for those who are enduring this crisis without faith in the Creator, without recognizing that the Creator uh, has a plan and that this is part of His plan that the suffering as well as the tragedy and the triumph and the resilience that is being witnessed in this time, the selflessness that's being witnessed in this time, the, the care and the concern as, uh, as well as the death and the life that's being witnessed at this time are all a part of a plan that is bigger than all of us. And this plan ultimately is, is focused on the purification of the soul of the human being, of the detachment of the human being from everything but the Creator. I'll continue reading. In consultation with the Muslim Center of Greater Princeton Board, as well as dozens, I would even say scores, of local and national imams and scholars and fatwa issuing bodies, Imams like uh, Sheikh Omar Suleiman and Sheikh Yasir Qadi and Dr. Ingrid Madison, Imam Muhammad Majid and uh, Imam Suhaib Webb, uh, Sheikh Muslima Permal and so many others, Dr. Hatim Al Hajj uh, and so many other scholars and uh, as well as uh, fatwa issuing bodies from Amja uh, to the Fiqh Council of North America as well as fatwa bodies overseas in Saudi Arabia, in the Emirates, uh, and as well as the uh, declaration by Governor Phil Murphy against gatherings of more than 250 people. At that time, when we issued this, it was 250 people. Now we know the directive uh, from the CDC is not to have gatherings more than 50 people. And the directive, the, the guidance from uh, the uh, White House from the administration of President Trump is not to have gatherings of more than 10 people uh, during this novel COVID-19 outbreak the weighty decision to temporarily suspend Salatul Jumu'ah at the Muslim Center until further notice was based on the statements of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surahs in, in this 22nd chapter of the Quran, ayah 78, surah to Hajj, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he has, chosen, uh, he has chosen you and placed no hardship in your religion. Allah ta'ala has not made any haraj in the deen for us. Uh, that means hardship that results and unnecessary harm to our bodies, our minds, or our souls. As well as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, obey God and the messenger and those in authority among you. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasul wa ulu al-amri minkum in surat al-nisa, ayah 59. And the hadith of the Messenger of God, may Allah bless him and give him peace, who said, whatever I command you, do to the extent of your ability, whatever I have commanded you to do, and establishing, especially for men, establishing the prayers, the five daily prayers in the masjid, as well as Salatul Jumu'ah, is from the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Transcendent and glorious is he, as well as from the commands of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we are to fulfill that command as much as we are able. 
but in the situation in which we are in, where we have our uh, scholars, our Islamic scholars, advising us to look at the bigger picture, to look at the greater benefit of society, when we have our uh, public health professionals calling on us to contain uh, the spread of this virus and to uh, socially distance ourselves from one another, to deprive the virus of oxygen, literally and figuratively, and we have our, uh, our government authorities calling on us to be responsible and to avoid uh, gatherings, again, to stem the tide of this outbreak. Uh, it's incumbent upon us to heed that uh, as long as it does not result in that which is in contradiction and uh, transgresses that which is absolutely uh, uh, explicitly revealed in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the authentic hadith of the Prophet sallallahu and the consensus, the ijma of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The legal maxim, the qaida fiqhiya, the legal maxim, risk of individual harm is endured in order to repel public harm. This is one of the principles of Islamic legal theory, of usul al-fiqh, that our scholars have employed in making, this in making the decision to temporarily suspend prayers, the five daily prayers in the masjid, as well as Salatul Jumu'ah, that our, the individual risk of not coming to the masjid, of not establishing the prayers in the masjid, and especially your Salatul Jumu'ah, and the, uh, is, is uh, outweighed by the public harm that could happen, the loss of life, especially for our elders, those that are most vulnerable among us, especially those with underlying health conditions, no matter what age, whether they are young, uh, middle-aged, or old, the harm that could potentially come to them has compelled us to make this very, very difficult decision, brothers and sisters. It was not easy, and there was much deliberation, there was much dua uh, made about this, and much consultation. Lots of uh, istishara was made. The consideration of public welfare in light of the spread of the COVID-19 and the need for all segments of the country to cooperate to combat, combat this disease and halt its dissemination, and in light of the obligation to obey governments in their directives and instructions that do not contravene the principles and aims of the Quran and the Sunnah, the path of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, from among the ayats that we are, are guiding us is the ayah, and I'm only reading the translation from the fourth chapter of the Quran, Ayah 29, from Surah Al-Nisa, Ayah 29, do not kill each other. Do not kill each other. For Allah, for God is merciful to you. And from Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, the chapter of the cow, Ayah 195, do not contribute to your destruction with your own hands. Right. These are all commands by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ayah in Surah Al-Nisa, the chapter of the women, ayah 83, in Surah 4, ayah 83, and when some matter of security or harm comes to them, they broadcast it, whereas had they only referred it to the messenger and to those of them with authority, their investigators would have found out about it. And this is... Uh, call to, and, and, and uh, this is one of the ayats that are calling upon us to defer to the guidance of our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and to those in authority among us, as long as those in authority do not go against the Quran and go against the Sunnah of the Prophet. وسلم, on the authority of Abu Huraira, now we're looking at uh, proofs, at evidence 
from the teachings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding uh, the the decision that we have made on the authority of Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, the Messenger of God, peace and blessings be upon him, said, "Flee from leprosy, Judam." as you flee from a lion. And this is part of a longer hadith. This is at the end of the hadith that is narrated by Imam al-Bukhari. May Allah have mercy upon him. Leprosy is a communicable disease. And the reason for the prophetic command to flee from it is so that its transmission can be stopped. Not to prevent those who have the ability and the knowledge to care for those who have leprosy to help them, but to prevent its spread among other segments of the community. This is an authentic narration from our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you should flee, flee from the leper the way you flee from a lion. And so we should not put ourselves in harm's way, brothers and sisters, by congregating uh, in, in numbers at the masjid. This is a proof that we believe as Muslims that diseases do transmit to others by God's permission, by bi'ithnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that one should distance oneself from their sources. It's related on the authority of Usama ibn Uzaid, may Allah ta'ala be pleased with them both, the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings rest upon him said, if you hear of an epidemic afflicting a land, if you hear of a plague, ta'un is the word that's used, if you hear of a plague afflicting a land, do not enter it. And if it afflicts the land you are in, do not leave it. This is also related by Imam al-Bukhari. This is a prophetic uh, a teaching that is establishing a principle of public health policy. When you hear that there is a plague in a place, you do not go to that place. And if you're already in the place, living there or visiting there, and you become aware that there is some plague or outbreak, you don't leave. You don't leave. And may Allah Ta'ala forgive us. It is out of, sadly, uh, this prophetic guidance was not followed when the first cases of the, uh, the, co the coronavirus were, uh, were made aware to the government of China when it first out during the first weeks, the first weeks. And not only, only that, the government suppressed. Uh, we know many of you who've been following the news know that one of the doctors, like the doctor who first uh, blew the whistle about this outbreak. He was detained uh, by the police. He ended up himself uh, becoming infected and ultimately he died. Uh, you know, so there was a lot of suppression in the beginning. And, uh, but if, inshallah, if people had stayed uh, in the area, stayed in China and been treated, right? We're not saying people should not be treated, but if people had stayed there and been treated, we would not be looking at about 150,000 or more, almost 200,000 people around the world infected and thousands of deaths. And may Allah Ta'ala forgive us and may Allah Ta'ala give us success in following prophetic guidance, which is not just for Muslims, but it's for others to choose to follow. Uh, but we need to convey the message. One of the reasons that an infected person is prohibited from leaving the area of the plague of the epidemic is so that such a person does not transmit the illness to others. Instead, he should quarantine himself from even the healthy people of that region. Ibn Athir, who was a great historian who passed away 630 years after the Hijra, after the immigration of Prophet Muhammad in the year 1233, Common Era, he mentions in his book, Al-Kamil fi Tariq, the complete history, that Amr ibn al-As fled Amwas with the people when they were afflicted with a great plague. This was a great plague 
about, they say about 25,000 companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. According to our historians, there was approximately 145,000 companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of his blessed passing, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Keep in mind, 145,000 companions. Out of those 145,000, about 25,000 passed away during the plague of Amwas. He, Amr ibn al-As, who was, radiallahu an, may Allah be pleased with him, who was one of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he fled with the people when they were afflicted and he went up into the mountains. And why did he go up into the mountains? Because the advice he received was that, and he said to the people, even though many people disagreed with him, that the plague was like a fire and you must go to a high place in order to deprive that fire of oxygen, of the oxygen of, of human bodies. And that's what he did with those people who obeyed him. He was their general and he took a very unpopular decision as the decision to suspend the five daily prayers and to suspend the uh, Salatul Jumu'ah was a very unpopular decision. He took that decision according to this historical narration. The narration is not a Sahih Hadith. It is related by uh, Ibn Athir and other historians. They have a less rigorous methodology of, of authenticity, but the Hadith, uh, the, the, sorry, the narration or the Athar is narrated by our scholars of history and it is uh, full of great wisdom and lessons for how we should, uh, we should act and the, the policies that we should enact in similar conditions. He went to the mountains until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the plague from them and he survived. And those who were with him survived. News of this reached Sayyiduna Umar ibn al-Khattab al-Farooq, Umar the son of al-Khattab, the one who, who distinguished between truth and falsehood. And he did not censure it. And he deemed, meaning he deemed his uh, actions appropriate. Also, on the authority of Abu Huraira, the messenger, radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, the messenger of Allah, Allah bless him and grant him peace, said, do not introduce infectious livestock into a healthy herd. This was also related by Imam al-Bukhari, and this specifically relates to husbandry, animal husbandry. But there's a principle here of not introducing organisms that are sick uh, to a, a, a body, a population of organisms that are healthy. And again, this is one of the hadith that our scholars used uh, in coming to the, this, uh, this decision of suspending the daily prayers and activities in the masjid and Salatul Jumu'ah. And then lastly, on the authority of Amr ibn Yahya al-Mazini, uh, who related on the authority of his father, Yahya, radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, that the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa said, do not harm or reciprocate harm. La darar wa la dirar. This is related in the Muwatta al-Imam Malik, which is a principle that the, uh, there should be no causing harm to others. That is the principle of our deen. And that harm is only allowed if there is a necessity that is justified by law. Otherwise, we as Muslims should never be the ones to harm others. Not humans, not animals, not plants, and definitely not the planet. And if someone harms you, the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu is telling us, la dirar, do not respond to harm with harm. Rather, protect yourself from the harm, neutralize the harm without harming the one who's harming you as best as you are able. Uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, idfa' billati hiya ahsan. 
ward off harm with that which is more beautiful, with that which is better. And with that, my brothers and sisters, uh, I end the letter that uh, came from myself and from the board of the Muslim Center of Greater Princeton. And uh, I, um, I sh again, we're going to open up the chat. Uh, I will unmute the, uh, the chat for anyone who has questions or anyone uh, who would like to ask or, or share their feelings. Even if you don't have a question, and you just want to share your feelings, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna ask that you limit your uh, remarks to uh, one minute, inshallah. And once the one minute uh, is up, you have 10 seconds to wrap, your, wrap up your thoughts. Uh, I don't want to have to mute anybody. Uh, I don't want to have to mute anyone. Uh, so please respect the, the time constraints. We want to give time for anyone else. Jazakumullah khairan. So I'm going to uh, unmute. Uh, mashallah, we appreciate your attendance. I see that there are 38 people and uh, Sister Saba has a raised hand. And so I'm going to, Bismillah. Actually, it's Saba and Mr. Heather. Thank you very much. I just have a suggestion. Can you hear me? I can hear you clear. I, I just have a suggestion that we started doing in our house. I think uh, we should all pray to record, you know, nafil to sunnah after every prayer is just to the, for the benefit, benefit of our, ourselves as well as our loved ones. Just a modest suggestion. Yes, and uh, so could you repeat that, please, Brother Haider, Brother Iftikhar? Oh. Uh, just, just a suggestion. We started doing it internally after every prayers. We just pray to recur uh, nafil separately, extra, just for the benefit uh, uh, of our family and of our loved ones, and for the protection of Allah from the from this plague. Yes, thank you very much. That's a wonderful suggestion. Uh, this is called uh, Salat al Haja, or the prayer of need. And uh, thank you, Brother uh, Iftikhar. This is a great suggestion. Uh, uh, I want to also add to that, that you should also, uh, again, with the same intention for the Salat al Haja, for the prayer of need, make the intention to pray Salat al Tawbah, the prayer of repentance. Okay. Along with it. You can either pray uh, the same prayer using those two intentions or you can pray turakats for the salat al haja the prayer of need and then another turakats salat al toba if you have not prayed salat al haja salat al toba yet uh, during, since the beginning of this outbreak i advise you and myself to rush to the prayer mat after uh, salat al isha and make those intentions uh, and, and make those prayers uh, inshallah ta'ala thank you very much uh, I'm going to look at the chat now okay I'm just going to look at the chat bismillah uh, brother Sajid says salams imam can we talk about Islam miraj now uh, not yet. We want to give people an opportunity to share their feelings and ask any questions. But inshallah, if we have time, we'll say something about Isra Miraj. Uh, if I don't have time to speak about Isra Miraj tonight, know that Sheikh Omar uh, Mia is going to be speaking about the Isra Miraj tomorrow during Sira Saturday. I will also be speaking about it Sunday evening, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, but inshallah, if we have we have about we have about ten minutes left. So if there's there's time, inshallah, we'll we'll go over. Thank you for your suggestion, uh, Abir, Sister Abir. I don't know if this is Sheikha Abir. Uh, salam. I live in New York City by myself, so this is a different Abir. Uh, you're also still welcome. Uh, I made the difficult decision to not go home in upstate New York because there are elderly people there and people my age might be asymptomatic. Is there any spiritual advice on what to do with this much alone time that wasn't a voluntary atikaf? Yes, sister, first and foremost, you want to use this time to reconnect yourself 
with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reading the Quran as much as you can, reading it, reciting it in Arabic, as well as reciting it in whatever language is your native tongue, whether that is English, Spanish, Urdu, Bangla, Japanese, Swahili, uh, whatever your native language is, read the Quran in your native tongue so that you can understand what you're reading it as well. Uh, secondly, uh, as I said, uh, this is an important time uh, to uh, learn about the, because we're in the month of Rajab, this is an important time to learn about the night journey and the miraculous ascension of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his journey from Mecca to Jerusalem, and then from Jerusalem up through the seven heavens and then beyond time and beyond space, all in the course of a few hours of a night. Right? This, is, this story is mentioned in the 17th chapter of the Quran, the chapter of the night journey. And it is also mentioned in the 53rd chapter of the Quran, uh, the chapter of the star. In Surah Al-Isra and Surah Al-Najm, read them, uh, recite them in Arabic, um, and then read their translation and a good scholarly commentary or a, a, or, or a translation of the Quran that has notes, explanatory, explanatory notes. Use this time also to fast. Rajab is the sacred month. It's encouraged to fast in this month of Rajab. And our scholars, many of our Muslim scholars, encourage fasting on the 27th day of Rajab to show thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Isra and Miraj of the Prophet wasallam, And this principle of fasting to show thanks and gratitude, shukr, is taken from the practice of the Prophet وسلم, who fasted, who made the intention to fast Ashura and who fasted Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, to show thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He made the intention in Medina uh, when he heard that the Jew, the Jewish community was fasting on the 10th of Muharram. He made the intention to fast the next year to show thanks to Allah for liberating Prophet Moses, peace and blessings be upon him, and the Israelites from, the, from slavery and oppression in Egypt. So fast uh, as much as you can this month because it's a sacred month, and then fast on the 27th of Rajab uh, in order to show thanks to Allah Ta'ala for the Isra Miraj. The fourth thing I would recommend, uh, my dear sister Abir, is to prepare yourself for the month of Ramadan, uh, begin eating healthily, uh, begin uh, cleaning your home if it needs to be clean, arranging your affairs at, in, at work and in your home so that you have as much free time as possible in the month of Ramadan to devote yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan is a time, brothers and sisters, to accelerate your spiritual progress. It is a time when divine breezes are blowing and when the rahmah, when the grace, the love of Allah Ta'ala is flooding the world. And when we are gifted with a night that is better than a thousand months, Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, the night of the decree. So brothers and sisters, prepare for that night. Uh, and then lastly, the fifth thing I would encourage you, my dear sister Abir, is to uh, be uh, uh, a, 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 uh, an agent of positive change. You may not be able to leave your home and may Allah reward you for your intention not to expose people uh, potentially to any illness, but you, there are many uh, causes that are in need of online volunteers. There are causes that need donations. Uh, our masjid even, if you don't mind me saying, our masjid is in need of our donations because we don't have the same foot traffic that we usually have. 
And so we need, we, but we still have bills. We still uh, have expenses every day, every week, and every month. So there are many organizations, many noble, noble uh, uh, organizations doing great work to serve society. Uh, they need your time. They need your money. Uh, they need your talent. And so if you're not already serving in such an organization, I encourage you to spend the time alone at home helping uh, online uh, those organizations. This is, um, you should treat this time as kind of atikaf, as you said, right? Treat it as an atikaf. And as our brothers and sisters should know, for, especially for women, a woman can make atikaf in her home. It is valid in her home. So while you're in your home alone during these days, make the intention for etikaf and you will see the spiritual uh, blessings of that. And there are so many other things you can do, but, but that, is, that is enough. Do lots of dhikr, lots of dhikr of Allah Ta'ala and sitting salat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The next uh, brother Tahir, Salaam Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Uh, salam Sidi can advise the participants uh, how to use the time productively at home with families, including children, not going to school, action plan while home. Uh, so I would encourage you to do the things I just mentioned. Uh, get the children together, sit in a circle, and read the Quran, discuss it, read the stories of the Isra Miraj. You know, a lot of our children don't know these stories. A lot of our children do not know these stories. Um, and if they do know them from going to Sunday school, then read a, a, a book of Sirah a book of biography that goes deeper than just the superficial facts that are usually covered in Sunday school. Go into the spiritual meanings and the jurisprudential or the ahkam uh, that the story of Isra Miraj uh, encapsul encapsulates. Brothers and sisters, everything that we need to know about Islam can be found in the story of the Isra Miraj if you understand it and you read it from beginning to end and focus on the authentic narrations uh, from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu of Alaihi uh, of the Isra Miraj. I would also encourage you brothers and sisters to uh, you know, play board games with your children. Play board games with your children, uh, staying away from games with dice, games of chance, but there are many good board games like Scrabble, uh, like uh, their card games, like Uno, uh, their Islamic trivia games, there's Pictionary. Get to know each other again. I went today with my children to the park, and the park is a wonderful place to go when social distancing is, uh, is um, uh, something that we're doing because it's very easy to stay not three or six feet away from people, but 10 or 20 feet away from people at the park. MashaAllah, we stayed away from the, the play, the, the, the children's, um, uh, 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 you know, playground uh, bars and the slides. We didn't go on that. We didn't sit on any benches, but we flew a kite and we played Frisbee and, you know, we, we rode bikes. So do things like that. Go to your backyard with your children. Enjoy yourself and make dua together as a family. Uh, pray for the ummah, pray for the Muslim community, and pray for humanity, uh, that Allah guides us to a, a, a cure uh, soon, a cure soon for all of humanity. Pray for that and ask Allah for that. And, and so those are just a few things you can do with your family, in addition to what I mentioned to Sister Abir. Uh, Sister Shahnaz Habib, says, uh, thank you so much for doing this. I'm so grateful to listen to you, mashallah. I live in New York City and came to a meditation talk you gave at NYU. Uh, this is such a gift to be able to follow your talks online. Alhamdulillah. Uh, may Allah ta'ala reward you for your support and your prayers. And uh, please pray for the brothers and sisters uh, on our IT team uh, who have facilitated this, as well as uh, for the, the, the brothers and sisters on our board. Uh, who facilitated this and our donors as well. Pray, pray for all of them and their families because without uh, our, our governance body and our donors and our IT team and all the volunteers that, that support this masjid, uh, we would not be able to do what we're doing this moment. So please pray for them and their families. Uh, Brother Tahir says, uh, Quran reading with deep reflection, reflecting on the Juma sermons and other talks by 
talk scholars have given an MCGP. Yes, thank you, Brother Tawyer. There are many, mashallah, there's a lot of content on our Facebook page. Uh, Imam Fode, Sheikh Fode Drame was just here. Uh, Sheikh Omar Mia, Sheikh Abir, Sheikh Ismail Isa. Uh, may Allah preserve all of them, mashallah. There's so much content on our Facebook page, so much content on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Sheikh Ismail Isa also has Tartil Academy uh, on YouTube. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's lots of content, lots of ways to stay engaged. And, and even though we may not be in the masjid at this time, and we pray that Allah shortens the time, uh, the masjid, number one, should be in your heart. The masjid needs to be in your heart and my heart. Brothers and sisters, what does that mean? That means that there should be, your heart should be empty of everything except Allah and what draws you closer to Allah. Even your dunya affairs, even your worldly affairs, even your business, even your work should be a tool that you use to get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how you make your heart a masjid. You should make a, a, your home a place of salah. As I said earlier during my khutbah, well not my khutbah, but my, my lecture, uh, my reminder in place of the khutbah, you should have, each and every one of us should have one room in our home. It doesn't have to be the biggest room, but have one room in your home that is just for salah, just for dhikr, just for reciting Quran, right? It doesn't, it's not a room for entertaining guests. It's not a room for playing uh, games or watching TV or, or working on your computer. It is just for ibadah. Have a room that's a musallah, and if you live in a studio, some of you said you live in New York, and I know how uh, you know, it's very difficult in New York to find space, if you're, especially if you're living in the city. If, you're, if your home, or your apartment, uh, or your studio is not big enough where you have a, a room, then at least have a corner. At least have a corner, you know, two by two feet or three by three feet that is, has your, your prayer rug, your sajada, your jannamaz, has your Quran holder, has a few spiritual books, your mushaf, your copy of the Quran, your dhikr beads and other books of dua, and you use that corner just for ibadah. Bring the masjid into your home. Bring the masjid into your home, inshallah, and that will help sustain you. Alhamdulillah. Uh, no, there's no estimate, estimate on when the jama'ah prayers will start. Is there a small supplication that you recommend uh, for these times? Yes, uh, I, I recommend uh, one of my teachers, uh, Sheikh Muhammad uh, Al Jilani. May Allah preserve him. Some of you know him. Uh, some of you have met him. Uh, I know Brother Sajid had the chance to meet him in Spain. Uh, he recommends that people make the following dua in these times. So first of all, I would before I share that with you, I encourage all of you to be reciting the 40 uh, Rabbana du'as from the Qur'an. And they're very easy to find. All you have to do is go to Google or go to your App Store or your Google Play Store and type in 40 Rabbana du'a. And you can download it. But these are all the du'as in the Qur'an, all the prayers in the Qur'an that begin with Rabbana. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adabana. Rabbana uh, and so on and so forth. There are 40 of them. You should be saying these. Secondly, there are certain prayers that the Prophet Sallallahu did. He would say in the mornings and the evenings. And included in those prayers are prayers for health and well-being and protection. We've been going over those prayers in our masjid, and I will, inshallah, share those prayers, share some of those prayers uh, during my nightly talks uh, that, will be, uh, that will be on, um, on the Zoom. Inshallah, we ask that you join us for that. But if you're not reciting these prophetic prayers in the morning and the evening already, I encourage you, brothers and sisters, for your own sake and for the sake of your families, start reciting the prayers of Prophet Muhammad 
because they are prayers for health and well-being. May Allah increase us all in health and well-being. Lastly, I want to share this dua from one of my teachers, Sheikh Muhammad Ajilani. May Allah preserve him. Uh, he's a well-known scholar uh, around the Muslim world. Uh, and it's a very simple dua. He, he said that it's specific for the coronavirus. Uh, and the dua is as follows. You should recite Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Fatiha once. And then you follow it with the words from the Quran. لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ كَاشِفَةً seven times, which means there is no one besides Allah that can remove it. Meaning, no one can remove this affliction or harm except Allah. لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ كَاشِفَةً You say that seven times. I'll say it one more time. لَيْسَ لَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ كَاشِفَةً Say that seven times. And then you call on Allah's name, Ya Salam, the one who is free of imperfections and flaws and deficiencies. Ya Salam means, O oh one, O oh he who is free, completely free of defects, flaws, and deficiencies and imperfections. Because we're asking we're calling on Allah's name, Ya Salam, so that we have, so that we have Salam, we have Salam, uh, we are free from disease. You call on Allah's name, Ya Salam, seven times. Ya Salam, Ya Salam, Ya Salam, Ya Salam, Ya Salam, Ya Salam, Ya Salam. And then you call on Allah's name, Ya Hafiz, O one who safeguards and protects seven times. Ya Hafiz, Ya Hafiz, Ya Hafiz, Ya Hafiz, Ya Hafiz, Ya Hafiz, Ya Hafiz. And then you end this dua with sending one prayer, asking Allah to send one prayer on Prophet Muhammad by any uh, formula you choose, any formula you choose. اللهم صلي على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. And of course, our scholars encourage us to add Sayyiduna before we say the name of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم out of love and out of reverence and respect for him and veneration صلى الله عليه وسلم. But any Salat ala Nabi, any durud sharif you know, you end it with that. So that's a dua that's specifically for the coronavirus uh, outbreak for protection and healing from it. And what does that mean? What does it mean that we're making dua uh, for protection and for healing from the coronavirus? It doesn't mean that all you have to do is say this dua and you will be protected. What it means, according to what I've been taught by my teachers is, you are calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send you all of the means and all the resources of, and all the causative factors that are necessary for your well-being and for your protection. And you should be open to those when they come to you. This is what it means. Just like when you make dua for rizq, when you make dua for provision, you don't expect money to drop from the sky, do we? We don't, right? Same, when you ask Allah for risk, then sooner or later, Allah sends you a job opportunity or a business opportunity, right? Or some capital to invest in a business. And so it's the same thing, right? So we should make dua, but we should also take proper health uh, precautions. May Allah Ta'ala bless all of you. Uh, we're going to end here. Inshallah Ta'ala, we'll close with the dua. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ليس لها من دون الله كاشفة ليس لها من دون الله كاشفة 
ليس لها من دون الله كاشفة ليس لها من دون الله كاشفة ليس لها من دون الله كاشفة ليس لها من دون الله كاشفة ليس لها من دون الله كاشفة يا سلام 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 يا حفيظ 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 اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ونشهد ان لا اله الا انت ونستغفرك ونتوب اليك اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم let us all recite surah al asr together بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر ان الانسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر in the name of Allah the absolutely loving the most compassionate by time surely humanity is in loss except those who have been faithful and who have done righteous deeds and exhort one another to truth and exhort one another to resilience. Amen, amen, amen. May Allah bless all of you. Please keep me in your prayers. Keep my family in your prayers. May Allah protect you and your families and your loved ones in this time. May Allah Ta'ala uh, save us, save humanity and, and, and rectify us and put us back on the right path. May Allah rectify what is between us and what is uh, between this planet. May Allah help us to be better stewards of this planet, better trustees of this planet. so that such viruses stop coming again and again. Jazakum Allah khair. And please stay tuned. Uh, stay tuned to our website and our Facebook page, our YouTube channel. Inshallah, there's going to be more beneficial content uh, coming through myself as well as the other scholars uh, that are uh, serving at the Muslim Center of Greater Princeton. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the compassion of Allah and his blessings.